And with surprisingly little fanfare otherwise, hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro. For some reason, the title screen doesn't actually have music to it, which I find very odd, admittedly. Previously on Spider-Man... Who dares? Face me, coward! Face a worthy foe! Spider-Man? He's stealing Octavius' device! That was Eddie Brock! I don't want to believe that you pulled off the heist today, but I've got to make sure. Daredevil! That leaves one question. Where's Rhino? Cat! Phase one completed. Let us begin phase two. No one can control the symbiotes. No one! And now, Spider-Man 2. So if you can't tell by that previously on segment there, this is a direct sequel to that one Spider-Man game on PlayStation 1 and a couple other systems that I played about... two, three years ago now or so? And that was also immediately obvious just by the fact that the menu is the exact same. You got some training options and all the gallery stuff you can access from the start, but there's nothing really to find there. So for right now, we're just gonna start a new game. I'm gonna be playing on normal mode just because I find it to be the best mode to play on overall. And I'd rather not play on hard mode overall. Easy mode is what I'd recommend for first-timers on this game, though, just because this game has some problems. Captain America foils Doc Cock and Spider Man's sinister plot. Spider Man's still at large. God damn it, J. Jonah Jameson, I'm not the villain here. Also, loads of these screens will be edited out starting from part two onwards or so. Welcome, true believers. Stan Lee here to bring you yet another scintillating tale of superhero daring do. Now it appears that trouble has found our arachnid hero yet again. So get ready for a pulse-pounding, web-slinging tale of shocking revelations. Beast, what's got you bounding about? Not a sentinel attack, I hope. Greetings, my web-slinging compatriot. I noticed perchance your diurnal patrol and thought I would provide you with information of a practical and necessary nature. Thanks for the show of interest, Beast. But I've been doing this for a while now. I think I'm okay. Indeed. We shall see. Would you mind telling me what this is? That's my trusty spider compass. It shows me where to go when I'm out and about. Hmm. I do believe you are correct, sir. Since you're so smart, why don't you try following me? And the tutorial mission begins. Though overall, the controls are the exact same from Spider-Man 1. R2 to web swing, triangle is in general your webbing, and pressing directional buttons in, in tandem with your webbing can cause other effects as well. Pretty good, webhead. Now I've seen these all over the city. This gives me more web... And similarly to the first Spider-Man game, 
There's still that weird audio issue. At the end of some voice clips, the audio seems to speed up and distort all at once, and I still do not know what's causing that. I've even tried playing a legitimate disc of this on my PC to try and make it work, but it does the exact same thing. I wonder if they rent or own. Spider sense Haha, <laughs> they brought the Fantastic Four Easter egg back. That's nice. And that spider sense, there's actually a bit of a thing that's not supposed to happen until I get to this dude here. This guy looks like trouble. How do you think we should deal with him? Using square and circle, I can punch and kick. And pressing triangle, I can shoot my web. Like with the first game, square is strictly for punches and circles for kicks. There's some minor combos you can do, but overall you're just going to end up spamming one or the other. I recommend punches over kicks though due to their added speed. Holding L1 will allow me to target those guys from here. And... I believe this is returning from the first game, yeah it is. L1 targeting is back, it's inverted controls, but you can target enemies from a distance and do whatever you can with them using your webbing from a distance with that. Uh, web yank is going to be very useful here in the early game because we're on the rooftop so much, and if you pull an enemy off a rooftop, they do die. Superior performance, Spider-Man. Hmm. I'll wager you could use one of these. One of these will give me more health. By the way, I should mention, uh, Beast there is voiced by D. Bradley Baker, who is also most of the characters in this game. This game only has about four or five voice actors, most of which are returning from the first game. Reno Romano is still Spider-Man, D. Bradley Baker is almost everyone else, Darren Norris is a couple of people. Now this looks intriguing. Piece of cake. Using my L1 targeting mode, I can direct my web swing. Fascinating. Uh, exercise caution at any rate. Darren Norris is still quite a few characters, and Jennifer Hale, who I, f I forget if she was in the first one or not. She's the two female characters in the game, though. You can only see two of those, one of those through the training mode. Uh, the training mode's actually the X-Men's Danger Room, and yeah. Professor Xavier and Rogue are both there. Pressing R1 allows me to zip line. R1 allows you to zip line up directly to a wall. It's going to be useful coming up. Splendid thus far. You're almost there, Spider-Man. Now, one thing I should note right now, we're next to a second crane right now, even though I skip it just to head over here. If you're playing on easy mode, you want to climb to the top of that girder. There's a reason. However did you become so proficient a shot with your web shooter, Spider-Man? I can cycle through targets by pressing the L2 button. I can pull them towards me by pressing web and down. Or I can pick them up by pressing punch and throw them by pressing punch again. I forget if this was in the first game, it's been a bit. But you can press L2 to cycle between targets that Spider-Man's automatically targeting. In this case, I actually want to target and web yank or just outright destroy all three of these boxes. The web yanks being very particular though. In fact, I think for some reason the webbing just feels a lot more picky with when it wants to work in this game. That come in handy and you fight. saw it on screen for a frame there, but by destroying those three crates, we got the first comic book from the game. Like in the first Spider-Man on PlayStation 1. Located throughout each levels, or well, most levels at least, are collectible comic books you can view in the gallery. Uh, there are 32 in all, however, I can only get that one right now on all difficulties. The reason I mentioned a few moments ago you want to climb onto the girder that the second crane is holding is because on easy mode, there's another comic there. I forget if they did this in the first game, but this game has difficulty exclusive comic books. And it's not like some games. Uh... It appears to me that the safeguarding of the Metropolis is in capable hands. Should you ever require more assistance, feel free to pay us a visit at the Mutant Academy to run through our Danger Room training simulator. Sure, Beast. I'll do that. Thanks for the pointers. But I'll get back to the comic books for in a second. For right now, we just want to swing across here and we'll finish off the first stage. And they give you an option to head right to the training mode right now, which if you're new to the game, I do recommend trying out. They up to. Time to do that hero thing, Spidey. He won't get far with that Spidey tracer on him. Hey, whoa, web freak! This level starts off with some 
uh, mooks to fight immediately. And I can't tell if this is just my brain making me feel like it is or not, but I feel like the enemies are a bit more aggressive in this game. However, your webbing still allows you to take them down fairly quickly. Now, going back to the comic books, it's not like some games where if, say, various collectibles unlock on higher difficulties, they're all available if you just play on hard mode from the start. If a comic book's available on easy mode, it's only available on easy mode. Same with kid mode, normal mode, and hard mode. There are a select few that are available on all difficulties, and I will be grabbing those along the way, but for this playthrough, I'm only grabbing the ones on normal and, e and all difficulty availabilities. I will be mentioning where all the others are, but uh, I won't be able to collect them. Because that requires playing through the game four times, and even though I like this game enough, not enough to do that in a row. And I'll talk about the comic books and which ones they are, like, uh, in the gallery uh, in a moment. Because we got another little cutscene here when we get down to this little... A setup? Huh, how original. All of you guys against me. You should have called And time for more enemy rushes. In the first level, the two comic books you can get, the first one on the girder is Spectacular Spider-Man number 197, whereas the one we got in the stage itself is Ultimate Spider-Man number one's white cover version. I forget if you need to come over here. Actually, no, wait, yeah, you do. The gimmick with this stage is that you need to be take out all of the uh, enemies in order to progress. Now, I forget which one it's under, but I'm kid mode in this stage. Underneath one of these trash cans, I want to say it's one I've already picked up. There is another comic book for you. And I believe that's Web of Spider-Man number 100. Now, oh, another thing really quick. Uh, there's, a, there's a basketball up here, and there's a basketball hoop down there. You can pick this up like anything else in the game. Little and if you actually anyone? throw it and get it into the hoop, a health cartridge appears. It's surprisingly hard to do. Well, actually, no, it's unsurprisingly given this game's controls. It's hard to do. I don't recommend going for it because you get, I believe, no, you get a health restoration at the end of every stage. Your webbing is consistent is between stages, anyone. though. Now, one difference from the original game as well is that the original game was developed by Neversoft, famous for the Tony Hawk game series. However, for the sequel, for some reason, they brought in Vicarious Visions to develop it, who are known more for their work that in a lot of the later Crash Bandicoot Spyro more. games, especially on handhelds. Spider-Man 10, Nameless Thug Zero. Another shout-out for yours truly. The signal from my spider tracer is growing weak. Better take to the rooftops and follow my compass. For the most part, Vicarious Visions did a good job in capturing the exact same energy and such of the original game. But it feels different at the same time. It feels like a lot of the stage and boss design decisions that we'll be seeing later are a bit rougher. Like they were designed for a different game entirely. I'm going to look more to see if I can find info about the development stuff for this game in between parts. But there is definitely some more rough patches in this game than there are in the original. Either way, by climbing up from this building, right then and there, we get the second comic book for the stage, Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, number 13. Alright, the signal from my Spidey Tracer is stronger from up here. My compass should lead right to him. For the most part, the early stage in this game, the most I can tell you in terms of guidance is follow the spider compass. It does a good job in telling you where you need to go. Especially because in the early game, a lot of the levels are just get to the end of the stage and you're good. Although, I recommend in any rooftop stages just trying to knock enemies off the rooftop with a jump kick or with kicks in general just because that's an instant kill to them all the same and then you don't have to deal with them for as long. Especially, it's especially helpful if there's a couple of them right next to each other. If I take out that thug, it'll stop the machine gun. I forget if something like this was in the original game, but new to this game, if it isn't, is little battlements that some enemies can be next to and use as weapons, for instance, machine guns. If you take care of the enemy that's using it, though, the machine gun will not fire on you. There's a couple of more things like that throughout the game, but eventually they end up becoming independent, with, uh, and by that I mean they don't need an enemy behind them to be able to be used. And that's where the game really starts to get annoying. Now, you're going to want to keep this bridge in mind for later. I'll be talking about that more in a couple of moments. 
Now, my experience with Spider-Man 2 is quite a bit Double less down. than Spider-Man 1. While Spider-Man 1, I had some amount of play in my childhood, thanks to my friend Paul. Uh, Spider-Man 2, he did not own. In fact, the first time I played this was maybe three or four years after we played this a lot, uh, the first one a lot. Which, even then, that maybe puts that around 2007 or so, maybe? It's a game I have a lot less experience with, and it makes me wonder if that's why I find this game to be a bit harder than the first one to begin with, but I think there's also some definite issues on the game's parts when it comes to that as well. Oh, that poor dude. A lot of my strategies you're going to be seeing in the levels require less use of webbing, because I feel like uh, in Spider-Man 1, webbing definitely could be used up pretty quickly depending on what abilities you're using, don't get me wrong. But I feel like due to the amount of enemies in this, in this game in particular compared to the first one, that your webbing feels like it lasts even less time. In particular, you're going to see me mostly trying to use uh, web yanks more than anything else throughout the early portions of the game. And impact webbing, which is up in the web button. Though I say it's up in the web button. It's closer to being both buttons at once, but it's also very picky about when it wants to work. Particularly with the web yank. Uh, very often you'll see me try to yank something and then maybe rotate backwards. Uh, you'll see me move forward and then just use the webbing instead of using the web and the impact web. It's picky. And it feels more picky than the first game, but I can't tell if that's my mind imagining it. Either way, at this point, the stage has a new gimmick for us. Uh, we have to take care of the three machine guns on the surrounding roofs. If you don't do that, you can't progress. I think you can just make do with taking care of the enemies controlling the machine guns instead of just controlling the machine uh, destroying the machine guns outright. But I decide to opt for doing both. Admittedly, even though I think this game is worse than the first one, I have to admit that I think the early game is about on par in difficulty with the, the entirety of Spider-Man 1. I think some of the enemies have a bit more range than they probably should. For instance, I think that machine gun shouldn't be able to shoot me until I'm swinging towards it. But at the same time, it's a machine gun. Come on. I don't remember if the soundtrack was done by the same person, Tommy Tellerico, as the... Uh, same person as the first one, Tommy Tellerico, rather. Let's get that sentence out in the correct order. But if it is, it's definitely the same kind of stuff he did for the first one. Although, apparently, Tommy Tellerico's a real asshole behind the scenes. Uh, so is, uh... Oh, I forget the... Uh, what, what game was it? Uh, Toe Jam? No, not Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, no, no. Woo! That's all of them. Gotta find that motorcycle. Woo! That's all of them. Gotta find Earthworm that Jim, that's what it was. The guy behind Earthworm Jim is apparently a real asshole, too. Now, at this point, we can head to one of the next buildings just to finish the stage off. However, I'm backtracking a little bit just to show off one little thing. You may have noticed earlier in the stage there was a set piece of a bridge. On hard mode, after you've taken out the three machine guns, if you head back there, you're going to find a comic book. I forget exactly where it is on the bridge, if it's on like one of the little struts, if it's on one of the little pieces at the end of it, either way. All I know is that it's Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, number 29. Usually I would cut out the trek to it, but I just wanted to make sure you could tell how much backtracking you'd have to do when it's back and forth. With that said though, I am going to be cutting backwards. And with the three machine guns out of the way all the same though, that's more or less the stage. Uh, we're going to have to swing over one more building, but once we reach a little, sh uh, not shed, warehouse looking area, we are done with it. Oh, I guess there's just one more enemy, but uh, not really worth considering. Either way, with that, I'm just going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part two, we'll be heading into stage four. See you guys then.